Hello and welcome. Before we start, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Jeremy Cook. I'm one of the trainers here at Cloud Academy, specializing in DevOps. Let's talk about functions. Functions are a way of isolating code that is needed in more than one place by refactoring it to make it much more modular. They are defined with the def statement or def keyword. Functions can take various types of parameters, as we'll see in the following slide. Parameter types are dynamic. Functions, more often than not, can return one object of any type using the return statement. If there is no return statement, the function simply returns none. Let's take a quick look at a simple function using our Python interpreter. We'll take the following code and we'll spin this up. OK, back within our terminal, we'll start the Python 3 interpreter. And this time, we'll use the def keyword to define our function. We'll call it say underscore hello. We'll take zero parameters. And all we'll do is simply print out the statement or print out the string hello world. Enter. Followed by another call to the print function to print out an empty line. OK, we can call our function now by using the function name, enter. And so this function has just been executed, and we see that indeed hello world has been printed out. We could establish a variable to hold this function. And when we take a look at the type of our new variable, we see that it's set to none type. So the reason for this is that when we created our function, we didn't specify a return keyword on it. So it's not returning anything. So we could also check that hello world is in fact none. And you see that it is set to true. OK, let's now create a new function. Again, we use the def keyword. This time we'll call it get underscore hello. Again, it will take zero parameters. And this time we'll return. So we're using the return keyword. Then we're going to return a string, uh, which will be hello world exclamation mark. OK. So the key point of the second function is that it's now using a return statement. And most functions that you create will in fact use a return statement to return something. We could again create a variable called hello and set it to be the return value of our get underscore hello function. This time if we print hello you can see indeed it's printing our result. And then if we check the type of hello, it's now classified as a string, which we'd expect. And finally, if we check to see whether hello is none, it's now false because it's actually a string. OK, let's create a third function. This one will square root a number and we'll be passing the number in as a parameter to this function. We'll return the square root of this number. So we take our input parameter we can now perform square roots on different numbers that we pass in. So we'll call our square root function with the number one, two, three, four. Likewise, we can also do it on another number. This time we'll do the square root of 2. If we take a look at m, we can see here that the square root of 1,234 is this value here. Likewise, if we look at n, we can see that the square root of 2 is this value here. Finally, let's use a string formatter to print out our values m and n to three decimal places. OK, so that was a quick introduction to functions. Let's now carry on. OK, so as we've briefly just seen, functions can have input parameters. 
functions can accept both positional and named parameters and furthermore parameters can be either mandatory or optional. They must be specified in the order presented in the next slide. The first set of parameters, if any, is a set of comma separated names. These are all required. Next, you can specify a variable preceded by an asterisk. This will accept any optional parameters. After the optional positional parameters, you can specify required named parameters. These must come after the optional parameters. If there are no optional parameters, you can use a plain asterisk as a placeholder. And finally, you can specify a variable preceded by two asterisks to accept optional named parameters. OK, let's jump back into our Python interpreter and take a look at each of these different types of function parameters. OK, for our first example, we'll define fun underscore one, which will take no parameters, and it will simply print out hello world again. OK, as we know, we can call this function like so. Now what happens if we attempt to pass in a parameter? It will tell us that it takes a zero positional arguments, but one was given. Okay, next we'll define fun underscore two, which will take one required parameter, n, and we'll simply return n squared. Again, we can call that We'll pass in, pass in 5, 5 squared is 25. Now if we call it without a parameter, we'll get an error saying that one required positional argument is missing. Okay, now our next example will define fun underscore 3, and it will have a required parameter with a default value. In this case we'll call it count, and we'll set the default value to be 3. We'll then loop over this using the range function over count and we'll print spam comma end equals enter. So now if we run it, we'll call fun underscore three with no parameters. We get spam written out three times because of our uh, default value for count. And this time we'll pass in 10 for count. And this time we get spam written out 10 times. So that is parameters that have default values. Okay, in our next example, we'll do fun underscore four. And this will be defined to have one fixed plus also optional parameters. We do that by specifying firstly our fixed parameter and then using the asterisk symbol we can state that we can have optional parameters afterwards. We'll then use the following print statements and now we can call it. So we'll call it fun underscore four with the value apple. And you can see that n is indeed apple, and that our optional variable is actually a tuple. So let's call it with some extra values. Again, we can see that our first parameter is fixed, and it's set to apple. And then our optional parameters have been captured in a tuple. Okay, in our next example, we'll create another function, and this one will be called fun underscore five. And this will be designed to have keyword only parameters. So we put in a placeholder first, and then we'll have two parameters. We'll declare this function to have the following print statements. And now we can call it like so. So we can go fun underscore five, and we'll specify an input parameter called spam. 
with the value equal to 1 and eggs equal to 2. Okay, we can call it again. This time we can change the positions of these parameters and we'll see that we get the same result. We can call it by passing in spam only and leverage the fact that a default value is set on eggs. We can do the same with, with eggs. And spam comes out with its default value. And then finally, uh, we can call it with no parameters. And we get both default values coming out. OK, in this next example, uh, we'll define another function called fun underscore six. And it will use keyword named parameters. So we do so by using double asterisks named underscore args and we'll declare it like so. We can then call this function passing in our named keyword parameters. So the first one will be name equals quest equals grail and color equals red. Enter. So we can see there that uh, our named arguments have come through. Uh, the first one with the name set to the value Lancelot, second one quest set to the value Grail, and third one color set to the value red. Cool. Uh, okay, let's just redefine our. Uh, last function and this time all I want to do is I want to print out name args as well as uh, the type of name args. Okay well, we'll just recall it like this. So what you can see here is that our name args is actually passed into our function as a dictionary with these key value pairings. So as we've just seen in our examples uh, functions can have default parameters required parameters which can have default values. They are assigned to parameters with the equals sign. Parameters without defaults cannot be specified after parameters with defaults. Okay let's take a closer look at default parameters. We'll take the following example and run it within our Python interpreter. So for starters let's declare our spam function like so. Here we can see that we have two positional parameters greeting and whom Greeting doesn't have a default value and whom does, which is set to world. We can then call spam like so. So whom is taking on the default value. And if we call it again, but this time we pass in Jeremy, whom is set to take this value here. Okay, in our next example, we'll define the ham function and We'll then call it like so, ham file name equals so we can see here that it's executed and that file format has taken on its default value. And then if we call it a second time, this time we'll pass in file name and file format, we get the expected result. Now what happens if we were to call the function like so? As expected, this fails because it's now attempting to pass in positional arguments. But the design of the function has an asterisk, meaning that there are no positional arguments. I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you want to view the complete course, please visit cloudacademy.com.